Hey, what is up guys? So we are going to be doing a deck profile on something I think you guys will be super excited to see. It is a Super Quantum Mecha Lord Artifact deck that actually topped an OCG. Keep in mind these OCG tournaments sometimes are smaller, but uh, you know, they are always going to be smaller. It's cool to see someone actually play something that's not Perform Power and Perform Mage, because that deck's been seen back to back over and over but this might be a good deck for some of you guys to try out if you guys want to i don't think it's going to be as competitive as perform mage and perform pals just because that deck is super consistent not saying that this deck isn't consistent because it has you know basically you get rid of any card and you're able to just go ahead and xyz on top of xyz and you have a win condition built into the deck essentially the super quantum metal lord great magnus can already win you the game automatically but anyways Let's go ahead and jump right into the deck profile, and then we'll talk a little bit more about the text and all the other stuff, and like, how do you ha bring out this card over here, which is the Duo Dawn King. This card is actually super amazing. But yeah, it's got some uh, artifact scythes in it, so it's kind of anti-meta-ish too. This card is actually anti pendulum but like I said, we'll talk more about it after we go through the deck profile. So anyways, let's go ahead and finally get started. So first off, we got two copies of Artifact Scythe. One copy of Moral Attack, one copy of Beagle Attack. That's it for the artifacts. And then for the uh, Super Quantum, we've got three Red Pilot. 3 Green Pilot, 3 Blue Pilot, and 3 Alphan. Then we have 2 copies of Ghost Ogre and Snow Rabbit, 3 Maxi, 1 Harpy's Feather Duster, 1 Soul Charge, 2 Artifact Ignition, 3 Emergency Teleport, 3 of the Field Spell, the Super Quantum Mecha Ship, 3 copies of Artifact Sanctum, 2 Mirror Force, 2 Call of the Haunted, and 1 Solemn Notice, 1 Solemn Judgment, and Solemn Warning. For the extra deck, we're playing one copy of Scarlight Red Dragon Archfiend, one Super Quantum Lord Great Magnus, one DDD Duo Don King Kali Yuga, one Gaia Charger, one Liger Zero, or Magna Liar as I like to call it, uh, number uh, Esther 9 Utopia the Lightning, uh, Pleiades, Volcosaurus, Durandal, Shark Fortress, Utopia, uh, the Aeroboros, Two copies of the Mecha Beast Magna Pulse. So one green, one red, two of the blue, and then uh, one Zen means to uh, round it off for the extra deck. As far as his side deck, three Drone Lockbird, three, uh, uh, two copies of Twin Twister, two copies of Monarch Storm Fourth, three copies of XY's Universe. This is actually how you pull off this guy over here. Then we have Vanny's Amphitheus, three Mask of Restrict, and Imperial Iron Wall. So that's going to be it for the uh, deck profile portion. But let's go ahead and talk a little bit more about the deck so you guys can maybe understand the deck a little bit better if you're interested in trying out the deck yourself. So if you guys don't know what some of the artifacts do, I'm going to briefly kind of go over them just so you can uh, check out what they can do and what they uh, can counter. Because Artifact Scythe is actually really good against Pendulums. So anyways, you can set this card from your hand to your Spell and Trap Zone. Uh, all the artifacts have this effect, by the way, that you can set them as a Spell and Trap. Then when they're destroyed on, during your opponent's turn, you usually get to Spell Summon and get some type of bonus effect. So, uh, this one is destroyed uh, by opponent's card effect and sent it to the graveyard. Uh, during your opponent's turn, you get to Special Summon it, and if this card is Special Summoned during your opponent's turn, you cannot... Your opponent cannot special summon monsters from the extra deck for the rest of the turn. So basically, uh, if you can uh, bring this guy out, it makes it so your opponent uh, can't bring out anything from the extra deck. That includes the pendulums that are already in the extra deck. So a lot of advantage there. At that point, they're kind of stunned. So that can help out significantly. And you can obviously set it with the ignition too. You pop something, then you go for the ignition. Very good stuff indeed. And this could also stop synchro based decks, XYZ decks. There's a lot of decks that still rely off of the extra deck. And if you can just br bring out this guy, he's 2200 attack too. And if your opponent can't bring out anything from the extra deck, sometimes they can't get over this. And then you have a free turn to hopefully bust out this card over here, which can basically be a win condition on its own. You also have Moral Attack, which is really good just to pop like one random card. Uh, that uh, you know you don't really like it's just so good and doesn't target excellent excellent effect If this card was at three it would help out against like cosmos even though cosmos are pretty much falling out of favor and here in the TCG because the magic specters pendulums just in general just really strong in the game, but uh, Basically has this little stun setup uh, that would be like the most important thing in the entire deck is to get out this guy against a pendulum deck and then as long as uh, you know, you can do this at the right time, you have a free turn to, like I said, set up for this guy, because once this guy comes out, I think most decks will just have to lose, because it's unaffected by, uh, your opponent's card effects, or, it, well, it's unaffected by card effects, except for Super Quantum cards, so unless your opponent is gonna bust out, uh, I don't know, like a Magna Liger, you pretty much have full reign to just attack your opponent and they can't do anything about it. Pretty good stuff indeed. Um, if you guys know of an out, now I know that some people will be like, well, you can use Lava Gold and you can use Kaijus, okay, well, 
Uh, first off, I believe Kaiju's is a TCG exclusive. Second off, no one main decks Volcanic Queens and Lava Golems. Yes, I understand people can side deck into them, but if we're talking about side deck stuff, you can obviously just side deck Master Strict against Match Specters and you win the game. Yeah, I understand there are side deck cards that automatically win. What I'm talking about as far as the main deck can uh, perform, power, perform mage, if this card is made, I don't really know what most of them do. I think most of them will just have to scoop it up. Like, it's just game at that point. But, uh, like you said, uh, getting out this card over here, this card is pretty interesting. You actually get it out with this card called XYZ Universe. So, you target two face-up XYZ monsters on the field, you send both of them to the graveyard. Then you get to spell summon one XYZ monster from your extra deck, except for a number monster whose rank is equal to or one less than the combined original ranks of those XYZ monsters. And if you do, attach it to, uh, attach this card as material. If you activate this card, your opponent takes no further damage this turn, but you're going to be summoning this guy on your opponent's turn. And this card actually has a really amazing, amazing effect. So, once per turn during either player's turn, you can detach the material, and this card destroys all spell trap cards on the field. Pretty good effect already, right? But it gets even better. You can detach one material from this card, then target one dark contract. It's not like you play those anyways. But, uh, for the most part, it's basically to disrupt your uh, opponent's pendulum scale. But, after this card is XYZ summoned for the rest of the turn, all other cards and their effects cannot be activated on the field, and other card effects on the field are negated. So basically, you get to pop your opponent's stuff, and like, it's just so amazing to summon this guy in your opponent's turn. It, it really just completely wrecks them. And because you have the artifacts, you have easy access to getting out uh, level, uh, or rank five, or level five, rank five monsters, so you can easily try to make this guy. This guy can basically stun your opponent, and blows up the pendulum. I think this card's gonna be very hot for people, some, uh, yeah, for some people that play this, and like, uh, certain decks, it's just so advantageous to be like, oh, I, I, I got this. It does require DDD monsters, but this you just bring it out with this card. Anyways. I guess DDDs can make good use of it too. But the XYZ universe is pretty good indeed. And now talking about, like, you know, obviously we can't play cards like um, Harpy's Feather Duster, but uh, another card that's going to be pretty good, um, because we don't have Super Quantums right now anyways, so uh, once we get, like, Twin Twister, that'll be a pretty good, like, semi-replacement, I guess you could say. Uh, some of the Super Quantums get bonus effects when they're uh, in the graveyard, sent to the graveyard, so pretty advantageous for you to actually uh, use Twin Twister. And um, this card also does hit two cards. I know Harvest Feather does is much better, but the thing is, we're probably not going to get this card back. I don't know, maybe we'll get Heavy Storm eventually, uh, one day soon, Kappas. But, um, I thought it was pretty interesting that he was also playing Call of the Haunted and Mirror Force, because I feel like these cards are a little bit too slow for the game, and Super Quantums technically want to be as fast as possible. I know here in the TCG, I saw a lot of people doing this, which was the, uh, Chicken, chicken Game, Pseudo Space, uh, I, I've even seen some people try out Library just because, like, you can run e tallies in the deck, you can run Upstarts in the deck, like, Library is a pretty, like, crazy card. Uh, some people are also doing Reasoning, uh... This card is actually pretty decent in the deck as well because you have a lot of different levels. Um, I mean, if you want to play the artifacts, go for it. But if you're playing reasoning, I would suggest you to not play like Ghost Ogre and Maxis because when you get reasoning and you activate it and you get a Maxi, it's just super underwhelming. It, it really sucks. I remember when uh, some people were play uh, reasoning, they would keep in Maxis in their Cosmo deck, and like when you hit a Maxi or an effect together, it just it really does suck. I mean, Ghost Ogre is not bad though because Ghost Ogre can still tribute itself. Um, so, uh, with, yeah, your hand, and, or it's not tribute, it's you send it from your hand, uh, or on your side of the field to the graveyard, and you get to negate and destroy, an, uh, or not negate, just destroy an opponent's card. And that's actually pretty advantageous. Again, uh, a really good anti-pendulum card. Like, these two cards are super anti-pendulum. They really help out. Sometimes if you, like, have this card turn one, you can make it so the pendulum player can't, like, really set up his board really well. And a lot of those pendulum decks, they only play, like, the Solemns, so... Uh, and they usually try to search them out, and there's like really four copies, four or five copies of the Solemns. So what you're able to do through that is, uh, if they don't draw any of them, you have full reign to just try to OTK or set up to uh, potentially make like a really strong card to where your opponent just simply can't even Yu-Gi-Oh. But um, I think this deck, it's got a little bit of potential, like I mentioned before. The problem that I would see in this deck is that, uh, like especially this version, is it doesn't bust this card out super, super fast. And I feel like... Against a deck that's able to search out, you know, solemn notices with the Ariadne mechanic, I think that you're just going to get outsped majority of the time. So, I mean, that's just my thoughts on it. I would like to know your guys' thoughts in the comment section below. Do you guys think that this deck has a good chance against Pepe? Or the Perform Power Perform Mage deck? Um, there has been a quite a bit of Burning Abyss tops, but... Uh, 
Burning Abyss has everything in the OCG, so they also have Beatrice. I don't know if you guys have seen this card. This card is actually pretty good. I think we talked about it in a video before, but this card is really good. It's like, oh, bend the Volva Chain, so it's cool. You get, like, it's cool. This, uh, Burning Abyss basically gets their own the Volva Chain, essentially. Just, like, it's it's really good. Oh, you have a, a Dante. Just no problem, man. But for the most part, I think this is really unique, and I think it's cool to share some of these more obscure decks that you probably wouldn't uh, have seen if I didn't probably mention it. But really cool stuff. Uh, I wish I knew the guy's name so I'd give him credit for really, like the deck. Uh, but uh, very, very awesome stuff indeed because it's cool. <laughs> well, it, it's kind of dumb in a sense that like Ban Towers. Okay, cool. Great Lord Magnus. It's like basically the same concept of it. Uh, it's just like get out one monster that's pretty much unbeatable. But anyways, thanks for watching. Like I said, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. But thanks for watching. Linderbo Will Smith, signing out.